Tesla has just reported their earnings for Q2. TSLA always attracts a lot of attention from the broader technology as well as electric vehicle sector enthusiasts. Of course, Elon Musk jumped on an earnings call and there were plenty of insights to take away. So today, let's discuss Tesla's earnings, what it means for the EV sector, and of course, any potential lith implications for lithium stocks as well. Sit back and enjoy. And so starting us off, here we can see the summary that Tesla provided with their Q2 2022 earnings investor update. They continue to make significant progress across the business during Q2, though they haven't been immune to many of the macroeconomic uncertainties. These include supply chain shortages, inflationary pressures. Of course, we know that their Shanghai production facility, which is a major producer of vehicles, was shut down for the majority of the quarter. However, despite that, they were able to still beat on the bottom line. They achieved operating margin among the highest in the industry of 14.6%, positive free cash flow of $600 million, beat consensus estimates, and they ended the quarter, so the June month of the quarter, had their highest vehicle production month in their history. It's worth noting as well that the June quarter had both Berlin and their Austin factories coming online. They're slowly in the ramp up phase for that. We know that in the initial phases of bringing these factories online, there's significant capital expenditure. Elon Musk himself stated that these factories at this stage were money burning furnaces. However, Gigafactory Berlin reached the milestone of over 1,000 cars produced in a single week. And the Austin factory, the first vehicles uh, are looking to get towards that ramp up position in this upcoming period. We can also see here that Gigafactory Berlin achieved positive gross margin during the quarter, which is a major milestone too. Having a look through here, just at the visual change, we know that revenues declined for this period. This is not surprising. There was a range of different uncertainties. This was well telegraphed. The question was going to be, what was the magnitude of the difficulties that were uh, encountered and how is Tesla going to navigate them? And by and large, looking at all things being weighed up, most analysts are stating that they probably were slightly ahead of where expectations were. We can see here there was four quarters of growth, four quarters of record before this sequential decline. Of course, total automotive revenues is still significant, so $14 billion worth of the total makeup. Uh, but you can see the other makeup here in terms of energy generation and storage, and of course, services as well. Having a look here at some of the insights from the earnings call from TSLA themselves. Uh, first and foremost, there was a discussions around the factory. Fremont factory, of course, reached new production records. Shanghai factory resumed full production towards the back end of the quarter, uh, which is a major one. Of course, the early part of the quarter had some real difficulties. New factories in Austin and Berlin are progressing well through the initial ramps, as mentioned. Initial capex, initial spend, inefficiencies, of course, but these factories are state of the art, they're top of the line, and over time, they're gonna really bring a range of different efficiencies uh, in comparison to other companies potentially out there depending on how this period plays out. The energy business achieved record gross profit with the highest solar volumes in many years. Uh, and what's interesting here on the automotive gross margin side, it declined sequentially to 27.9%. We know that last quarter it was at 30%. Uh, it's still well above uh, most and the majority of the incumbent EV makers, where depending on the companies, potentially 12, 15%, up to 18%. So it's still significantly higher, excluding the uh, credits, this is 26%, but it's still above those. We can see here some of the reasons why that they've drawn out. The temporary decline in Shanghai production, obviously meaningfully impacted margin. You have to include idle capacity and the factory resite costs and other contingencies and provisions. Uh, as discussed on the previous calls, they're still working through the ramp inefficiencies. We've seen this with other factories that have come online too. And they're continuing to see a benefit from higher pricing flowing through. Of course, in a period of inflationary pressures, Investors are always looking for companies that potentially have pricing power. Uh, and they've stated here that Tesla have continued to state that their issue is not on the demand side, there's significant demand, there's actually a wait list for uh, their companies, but it's on the supply side and output and trying to ramp up production output as quickly as possible. I've got a range of different headwinds here, uh, including FX headwinds, cost structure continues to experience cost increases from inflation, commodities, we know Elon Musk's view uh, on the lithium prices and we'll talk about those later in the video, and of course logistics with the supply chain difficulties too. Just having a look at some of those other things that were drawn out there, automotive gross profit margins came in at about 26%, uh, excluding the regulatory credits as we discussed, still a little better than the street projected, but below the 30% uh, peaks. As we can see here, using a bit of contextual um, reference points, GM and Volkswagen, Q2 gross profit margins of about 16 and 18% respectively. Operating income came 
uh, in at 2.5 billion, down from a record $3.6 billion reported in the first quarter. It's the third best quarterly operating profit uh, ever, despite the difficulties. Uh, and we can see here, so $1.83 uh, EPS was expectations. They beat on that front. Analysts projected about $570 million in uh, free cash flow. They actually did $600 million plus for the quarter. Uh, but of course, it's well down from the peaks because of everything that we've outlined uh, above. What was also interesting to note as well was on the cryptocurrency side, we know that Tesla and Elon Musk as an individual have been quite uh, vocal about crypto and they actually uh, brought Bitcoin onto their balance sheet. They took, uh, they avoided a bigger charge, sorry, that was ex expectations of a large write down, but it actually um, kind of was shown that they sold about 75%, so three quarters of their Bitcoin holdings during the quarter. Of course, you know, the cryptocurrency market has been down and down significantly uh, over this past period. So they actually avoided a bigger write down. For those who were interested in the cryptocurrency market, Elon Musk stated during their earnings call that this wasn't a vote or a verdict uh, on crypto itself. Uh, it just had to do with uh, cash provisions that they needed because of the uncertainties, particularly with everything playing out in Shanghai and the need to be flexible uh, during these difficult periods. But it was interesting to see that the crypto market did sell off uh, on the back of, the, of this news coming out with the earnings report. And then finally, we know that Tesla uh, and Elon Musk have stated that they've got a soft target, soft forecast of 50% average annual volume growth uh, year on year. Last year with uh, over 900,000 vehicles, aiming for about 1.4 million has been that uh, consensus estimate of the 50%. It'll be interesting to see if they get there. they are just over 500,000 vehicles here now. So to get there, and uh, they didn't state that they don't believe they're gonna get there, uh, would be over 800,000 vehicles. So that's gonna be a significant ramp up. And if they do manage to get that and maintain that 50% growth, uh, despite all of the headwinds and difficulties, of course, it's yet to be seen. We'll have to see how the macroeconomic environment unfolds. Uh, but that would be a very, very, very big second half of 2022 uh, in comparison. Drop in a comment below as well. Let us know your thoughts on the story. We can see here a uh, few interesting discussion points from Elon Musk. He actually provided a tidbit as a personal view. He believes inflation will decline towards the end of this year, but warned investors to take that prediction with a grain of salt. Of course, nobody knows where things will head. That was just his take on it. Um, he said that for the most part, commodities uh, are starting to see a downwards trend towards the end of this year or next year, though he had some interesting tidbits to talk about lithium as well. Uh, he's stated this before and reaffirmed, you can't lose, it's a license to print money. Uh, and then scrolling up here, this was a nice uh, visual, just comparison side by side, uh, the electric pulled together, uh, looking at production capacity. This was their reported capacity Q1 2022, and then the uplift that we got with this earnings call that they've stated. So you can see here some of the um, growth from Shanghai from 450K to 750K there. Uh, we can see Berlin and Texas were obviously early initial ramp, uh, now potentially 250,000 uh, annual capacity adding a little bit in at Fremont as well, 50,000 additional cars for the Model 3 and Y. And it's also worth noting that Tesla, TSLA, they're not playing within a vacuum. The electric vehicle revolution is happening. Uh, companies around the world are investing heavily. The incumbent, EV, uh, incumbent automakers are investing into their EV divisions. And we saw some interesting moves from Ford over the past couple of days as well. We can use this as a bit of a proxy about the mindset for the broader uh, incumbent automakers. Of course, we're seeing significant investment from many of them but Ford plans to cut thousands of workers to give them a leg up in the race to win a bigger share of the market for electric vehicles. Of course, most people intuitive, intuitively would be like, wait, cutting vehicles? How does that work? And I've highlighted this in this article, but actually the cuts of up to 8,000 workers will come from Ford's traditional ICE or internal combustion engines business. And they believe that these cost savings will help to drive po uh, profitability and cash flow, uh, and ultimately will help to lead to investment into their electric vehicle segment. It's worth noting as well that Ford recently reorganized into new business units. They're gonna start drawing out and reporting from their EV business now, as well as their commercial business. It was bundled in together previously. Uh, and we can see here for a bit of a highlight, plans to be selling 2 million EVs a year around the globe by 2026. Of course, as mentioned, Tesla last year was around a million vehicles, 50% year on year obviously gives you that insight to the ramp up around 1.4 million for this year if they maintain that. So that gives you an insight into the scale for Ford as they ramp up over the next uh, four or so years to two million vehicles. And then finally as well, as we all know, lithium has been on a wild run over the past year to 18 months. The price of lithium has continued pushing higher and higher. 
Many of the lithium stocks have soared to record highs as, as well. There's been a lot of discussion about how lithium will play within the supply chain, particularly with the rising costs here. Elon Musk has been vocal about uh, where he believes the lithium prices are. He's continued to reaffirm it here, stating the pricing of lithium is insane. Uh, and he also stated this previously, but now he's stated it once again, that print, uh, the lithium refinement, so the downstream component, as he stated, upstream mining is relatively easy, uh, but the downstream component is like minting money right now. He said that there's like software margins in lithium processing right now. And so he'd encourage once again, entrepreneurs to enter the lithium refining business. We also did hear uh, Elon Musk previously state that he was interested, or not interested, but previously stated that uh, if nothing changes with lithium prices, potentially Tesla might have to consider getting into the lithium supply chain somehow, which obviously if that happened would have impl implications for uh, the broader lithium sector. It would attract a lot of attention and it'd be fascinating to see how they engage with it, whether it would be through JVs, uh, partnerships, uh, through investment stakes uh, itself, would they be buying up um, plots or potential projects? But we did see, uh, the first of its kind, Vulcan of Energy have stated they believe uh, that it's the first of its kind, world's first upstream investment in a listed, listed lithium company by a top tier automaker. Um, but we saw this, Stellantis obviously is an uh, automaker based in Europe, but they invested 50 million euros into Vulcan Energy. And so this gave us a bit of an insight into how it could look. Uh, obviously they're going to be uh, continuing to share resources. There's an offtake agreement involved as well. We know that Tesla have got offtake agreements with a number of ASX lithium stocks too. This was only just a month ago now. So it's the reported as the first of its kind. It'll be fascinating to see if we see other automakers take this lead and continue to get further involved into the supply chain and what those implications mean for the broader lithium sector as well. We've just dropped the second channel. Four Investors is now live. We'll be dropping plenty of market news on this one. So make sure you've subscribed, turn your bell notifications on. If you're wondering why the set, we've left Barcelona. We've just arrived in Seville. It's been 40 degrees, the weather's been warm. We'll get a travel vlog out soon with some reflections on it. So subscribe, drop in a comment. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the video. For now, stay well and happy investing.